Well, look who's here, the chairman of House Judiciary, Congressman Jim Jordan. Also from House Judiciary and House Oversight, Congressman Russell Fry. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us tonight. Wow, yeah. it was a fiery day, Congressman Jordan. What's your takeaway from Attorney General Merrick Garland's testimony today, Congressman Jordan? Well, they're all over the place because, you know, if, if he didn't need the authority, then why did you give? I mean, if he already had the authority, I should say, why did you give it to him? Because, you know, David Weiss told us originally he had ultimate authority to determine when, where and whether to bring charges. And then, of course, he changed 23 days later on the uh, uh, June 30 letter to me and said, well, he really didn't. He could only bring charges in his home district. But Merrick you mean Garland against says Hunter he Biden. had the, You mean against Hunter against Biden? Hunter Biden. Right, but Merrick Garland said, no, no, he had the authority the whole time. So uh, we asked him the simple question, uh, again, why does he need it if he already had it? So I think there's all kinds of contradictions there. And then, of course, there's the fundamental issue, the double standard, that there's the special counsel who's attacking President Trump, and there's a special counsel, Mr. Weiss, who's protecting President Biden. That's not supposed to be how our justice system works. Yeah, so what con uh, Chairman Jordan just said, what was your reaction today to with what you saw, Congressman Fry? But I think what, what the, the, the biggest perplexing thing to me or the frustration is that you see this legal game of red light, green light going on with the Department of Justice. They stonewall um, charges being brought in the District of Columbia in March of 22. They stonewall it in California. Meanwhile, the Attorney General has twice testified on Capitol Hill that Attorney Weiss had every all authority to do this and so it's always this stop and go and I think that's the really troubling crux is to, to the chairman's point if he had the authority he wouldn't need to designate special counsel but instead we've seen uh, statute of limitations run we've seen the slow walking of this IRS whistleblowers have talked about that so this thing is just rotten to the core yeah I mean you know average Americans they get immediately charged with tax evasion right off the bat I mean, so, but they let the statute of limitations lapse right. on 2014-2015 Hunter Biden tax evasion charges. Why? That's not yeah. fair to regular Amer Americans. You know, let's listen to the fireworks. The fireworks were immense. Watch this. Have you had personal contact with anyone at FBI headquarters about the Hunter Biden investigation? I don't recollect the answer to that question. So those whistleblowers are lying to us under oath? They're, those whistleblowers are lying? Their, their description of the process is cumbersome as an opinion. It's not a fact question. What I'm wondering is why you guys let the statute of limitations lapse for those tax years that dealt with Burisma income. There's one more fact that's important, and that is that this investigation was being conducted by Mr. Weiss, an appointee of President Trump. I left it to Mr. Weiss whether to bring charges or not. That would include whether to let statute of limitations expire or not. The no. idea that someone with my family background would discriminate against any religion is so outrageous, is so absurd. Mr. Attorney it's General, it was your FBI your that did this. It was your FBI that was sending, and we have the memos, we have the emails, we're sending undercover agents into Catholic churches. You were appalled by that memo. Okay, so he's appalled about the memo, but Chairman Jordan, okay, the IRS whistleblowers are veterans. They work on complex criminal tax cases. But what they yeah. testified to is just an opinion. And then Garland admits it was up to Weiss. It was up to Weiss to let the statutes of yeah. limitations expire on Hunter Biden's tax evasion charges. But other Americans yeah. don't get that treatment, Chairman Jordan. No, you're exactly right. And let's remember, the whistleblowers stood, their testimony stood up to four hours of cross-examination in the House Oversight Committee by Democrats here in Congress. Their testimony has been consistent and it has stood up under cross-examination. That's not the same with the Department of Justice or the White House. Their story has changed multiple times. And you're exactly right. This statute of limitations issue is central to the case. Because the years they let lapse, the years they let to expire, the statute of limitations dealt with the income, the millions of dollars of income Hunter Biden got from Burisma. Never forget the four fundamental facts. Fact number one, Hunter Biden went on the board of Burisma, got paid a bunch of money. Fact number two, he wasn't qualified to be on the board. His words, not mine. He said he got the position probably because of his last name. Fact number three, the Burisma executives asked him to help them deal with the pressure they were under from the prosecutor. Fact number four, Joe Biden goes to Kiev, tells them, uh, leverages American tax dollars to get Shokin, the prosecutor, fired, who was applying the pressure. And oh, by the way, Liz, that last fact, 
totally comports with what the confidential human source told the FBI and the FBI recorded in the 1023 form. So that's pretty compelling. And now we're going to let those those that statute of limitations expire because that's the one charge that leads to the White House, that leads to Joe Biden. It's OK to charge on the gun charge. That's only Hunter right. Biden, but not on Burisma, not on those tax years. You know, and to what Chairman Jordan is saying, in Congressman Fry, if it was if you know, if it was any other president, right, who was a, a, accused of a, a, a major bribery allegation, this, it wouldn't be treated as conspiracy theory, right, stuff by the media. That's what MSNBC and CNN is talking about. And now A.G. Carlin can't recall if he talked to anyone at FBI headquarters on the Hunter Biden investigation. How can he not recall that? It reminds me of FBI Director Chair, uh, you know, Comer saying hundreds of times he can't recall. They really have that slip of memory there? Well, I just don't understand how you can run an entire department of our United States government and just conveniently leave off, I don't know, the most bombshell story to hit your your department. I think it's just absurd that he doesn't know these things and doesn't remember. And I think people just see through it. I think when we have these hearings and when they don't answer and they dance around questions, they see it for what it is and we, what we know are the facts. And, and they have done everything they can to delay this case, to let the statute of limitations expire. You look at the conduct of some of the attorneys in that office. I mean, the sweetheart plea deal of a lifetime, the prosecutors acted more like defense counsel than they did prosecutors. It's just absolutely absurd. So, you know, Chair Jordan, you sent a letter to special counsel David Weiss. Is he going to testify October 11th? Because these IRS, IRS whistleblowers say the misconduct by the higher ups at DOJ and the IRS should concern all voters. And they're also saying Hunter Biden suing the IRS is yeah. question the timing because this comes right around the time of the impeachment inquiry. Yeah, well, Mr. Weiss is committed, the Justice Department has committed to come. That is now scheduled for October 11. We expect him to honor that commitment. Now, we do want to talk with a bunch of other folks who were part of this investigation before he gets here. We'll see if the Justice Department complies with that. But I don't think they can hide behind ongoing investigation because they committed to providing uh, Mr. Weiss in front of our committee. They committed to that before he was named special counsel. And remember, they even said at the plea hearing that the investigation was ongoing. So they already committed to that. So I expect him to be there on the 11th. Got it. Chairman Jim Jordan, Congressman Russell Fry, gentlemen, thanks for joining us tonight.